Honestly, I don't quite remember hearing like Rafa was going to be this super talent, you know, like you hear some other players, you know, when they're young and because he never, I think, won a junior Grand Slam. So this is really when you hear, um, you know, a talk about the junior. Rafa came uh, through this sort of Spanish school. They play satellites and futures and little tournaments of, on the, of the men's tour pretty early in their career. But once I, I saw I was going to play him, I knew he, he was a good player, but I didn't know how well yet. Well, I remember playing him first time in Doha. It was, uh, well, I can't remember now the year, but he was ranked around 45, 50. And I won, I remember I won in the third set. And after the match, I was saying to my coach, I mean, the defense of this guy is just incredible. And, and that was just the beginning, of course. I mean, now I realize, you know, that his defense back then was already phenomenal. And the thing that he improved a lot, of course, it's his, his offensive game and, and, and his serve. So, Yes, I mean, he climbed, climbed up really quickly. In 2004 in Miami, Nadal played his first match against Roger Federer, in which the Spaniard won in straight sets. They would go on to play each other again on 17 occasions, including the epic Wimbledon final in July. The Nadal Federer rivalry has defined the very sport. No, absolutely, and I think we've had some really fair and cool battles over the years. Um, there's always a few that stand out most, you know, especially the ones in the finals where we played over five sets, like in, in Rome, in, uh, in Wimbledon twice, in Miami once as well. So I think we've really also lived up to the expectations, you know, because it's not always easy to fill, you know, you know, make everybody happy, really, because they, they come and see a final and they expect five sets, then sometimes you get a finals like we had in Paris where he just dominates me and you're like, what happened, you know, what was wrong, but you get days like these as well. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, and they, they get along well together and I think they're good friends and uh, so it's even more surprise, you know, uh, then on court, uh, I guess they want to kill each other, but uh, I think it's great for tennis, it's great for sport, all their matches are, are great, you know, very entertaining and, and it, you know, it's a great show to, to watch a uh, match between, between both. It's better than anything that, that's going really in golf than Tiger and Phil and I think it's going to go down as, as one of the greats with the, the McEnroe Borg or, or Connors and Borg and, and any of those other rivalries. I think it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be up there of all time. 2005 was Nadal's real breakthrough year. He beat Guillermo Correa in the final of the Monte Carlo and Rome Masters Series. After which Correa declared Nadal was the best clay court player in the world. Later in the year, he won the Rogers Cup in Montreal, defeating Andre Agassi and, in the process, confirming he was more than just a clay court specialist. Today, after becoming the first player since Björn Borg to win the French Open and Wimbledon titles in the same year, he's the complete player. I really think he's, he's turned into a complete player and uh, it's, it's a credit to someone who was already near the top of the game in, in so many aspects to still try to improve and he's done that and, uh, and shown why he he's deserves to be number one in the world now. The, the, the difference between now and, and 10 years ago is that the, the fast courts are not fast this anymore. The grass is not grass what it was before so it, it definitely does help his game. But, uh, you know, he, he proved to everyone that he can play on any surface and, you know, he's just really complete player. He, he has been improving everywhere. He, he believed when he was young that uh, he could win Wimbledon and, 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 you know, we were not laughing, but, uh, okay, he's a kid, you know, he, <laughs> he thinks everything is possible, but uh, he believed that and, and I think that's why he won. With two Grand Slams, three ATP Masters Series and Olympic Gold, it's been an incredible year for Rafael Nadal. He's almost certain to end the year as the world number one, and there is no one, not even his arch-rival Roger Federer, who would argue with that. The question now, how long can the 22-year-old maintain such dizzying heights?
Well, I guess that's a big question now, you know, I mean, he's been number two for, for a very long time. Now he's number one, now he's the one that's being chased and who was supposed to win every tournament he enters, you know, and he's not allowed to lose in the first round because if number one falls, it's always bigger news than when a number two falls. So we'll see how he handles that. Yeah, well, I think his, his advantage is well, he's, I, I think he's always going to be the best clay court player, uh, especially for the next four or five years until someone else maybe comes along. But, uh, you know, so he's sort of got those ranking points almost in the, in the bag before the, the year starts. And it just, you know, depends if he can continue his, you know, form on grass, uh, I guess. He plays always very solid on hard courts, but, um, you know, he's done great on grass the last few years. If he keeps that up, then there's no reason why he can't stay there for, for a few more years. I have no idea. Uh, obviously, all of us, being competitors of his, want to want to knock him off there, and we want to we want to get to that position. But uh, obviously, Roger's got the closest uh, closest uh, reach to him. But uh, you can't really count Roger out. You can't count Rafa out. They're they're going to go down as two of the greats of all time. So it's going to be fun watching and, and seeing uh, how Rafa deals with being number one and, and how he deals with the pressure and if he can handle it the way Roger has handled it for so long. 2008 has very much been Rafa on the Dahl's year. He faces many challenges in the future, but the titles, the accolades and that unique Nadal intensity are set to continue. He is the game's dominant force. One more win today against Gilles Simon and he definitely ends 2008 as the world number one. And as most of the, the players there were saying, there'll be no complaints at all. What he's achieved mm. over the past 12 months or so means surely he deserves it. 100%. And nothing, nothing short of remarkable really what Nadal's been able to do again this year and it started um, I think by another very good performance in the Australian Open albeit he was hit off the court against Songa and then to think that a year ago in this very tournament he was hit off the court again against Nalbanian but you just can't see that happening now uh, because the way he's evolved his game as some of the, the players were saying I think he's all credit because when you burst on the scene as Nadal did winning French Open titles, it's very easy to think, oh, okay, well, I, I, my, the way I play my game, I don't really want it to, to go into different areas with the possibility that actually I might, my ranking might drop. But anything with it, with Nadal, he, he has continued to um, improve the rough edges, the serve, the net play. Uh, he takes the ball even earlier than, than he, he did a year ago. And for, for someone who I felt maybe... 2005, 2006, that he, he could play his best tennis, 23, 24, and then be a spent force at 25. I cannot see that now, Marcus. I think we...